Hey guys, what's happening? Just got back. So, this could be CB Gold here. I'm not sure. I mean, the ad looks pretty good. So, um, I just I did a quick look in there just to see if the thing was actually in there, but it was. So, let me get back to that real fast. But, I'm kind of going through and I'm kind of restoring my, uh, redoing my radio system here, you know. Like my radios and, uh, Working on one of the presents over here too, but I actually wanted a. Uh, I'm looking for a single sideband radio, kind of like an older. I like, I like the older radios. Um, this this thing is super rare. Um, you don't you never see them on eBay. I mean, it's pretty rare to see them on eBay. Um, but let's open this up. And see what's in it. Yeah, I didn't realize the guy who was going to be the whole box of stuff. So got some pretty cool stuff in here too as well. So yeah, I noticed there were some. A bunch of different wires in here, so obviously you got coax, cable coax, okay, more cable coax, and a lot of coax. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not gonna use any of that stuff. Okay, a lot of coax, more coax, an old old school like a uh, TV connector. Yeah, so I guess the the guy had uh, it was the guy's father's. Uh, this is actually in pretty good shape. So if you're not familiar with this Road Talker, um, I'm not. I think this came out in the '70s. I think I'm not sure, but yeah, look at that. Came with the radio, the hand. I don't know what's it called, like a candlestick mic. I'm not sure what that's called, but it looks like it even came with this other mic too. Amplified noise canceling mic. Okay. Okay, on off. Oh, high low. See that. What's inside there? Is that battery in there? Made in Japan. All right. Um, so it's a CB base station. Coax. But this is mainly what I was interested in here, right here. Um, was the sideband. But yeah, this thing actually looks really, really good. Uh, yeah, you can never see these on eBay. It's super rare to see this thing on, the, on eBay. Um, also, I should, it came with this thing. He said, hey, I got like a, an antenna thing. Okay, so what's that thing? Royce SW, uh, SWR watt meter looks like. It's this. Okay, it looks like it's some kind of adapter, probably. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to take this out. Put this on my bench real fast. Oh, geez, it's heavy. Way heavier than you think. Yeah, I guess I forgot. It's from the 70s, not like the not modern stuff. Wow, this thing's actually pretty big. Alright. Alright, so this thing actually looks a lot bigger in person than it does in the pictures. Like, it, you can kind of see how big this part is right here, but how thick it is. It's really thick, and it's crazy heavy. Um, so what kind of board they use in here? Like, I know Uniden actually pretty much made, like, all these radios. You know, they made the, the PCB, the main boards, and then it seemed like a lot of the, from what I can see so far, is that they all use unit of main boards, and then they change the faces. They have different faces. Actually, I don't think it's not blown. I don't want to blow it in. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna take it apart and look at it. Um, so it has fine tuning, RF gain, SWR call, squelch, squelch. What's the tone do? Don't know. I said I mean I'm kind of a. I mean not really. I do RF, but I don't typically do RF for like uh, like ham radio, that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I have experience with it, but it's not really... I deal with more like uh, RF with like communications for like uh, business stuff, like IP communications and that kind of stuff. Towers, radio. I, I basically work in IT. Um, okay, so uh, take a look here. So yeah, I noticed they, uh, all the road talkers have this weird... This is sort of like an old... I think it's a DIN connection. Sort of like an old uh, AT keyboard connection. If you guys are new to computers, it's a uh, eight. This is something they had back in the eighties and nineties. AT style connectors. I think that was called DIN or a larger DIN. They had mini DIN, and I guess I had this bigger DIN. All right, so SO two thirty nine connector. Um, okay, it's PA speaker, external speaker. Looks like the is that a serial number that's. What's that number right there? 
Yeah, I heard a lot of people actually would scratch on their initials in the back of it. Um, yeah, I, I was actually, what's funny, I was, I was about these road talkers. Some other guy on, on the internet that was reviewing the road talkers said a lot of these would have their people's names scratched in the back of it. Um, okay, so if the mic was made in Japan, I wonder if this was made in Japan. Oh, yeah, Japan. Okay, so this is made in Japan. So, um, how do I take it apart? I want to look at it and see it inside. See what makes it work. Also, man, I also want to check, before I fire it up, I want to look at the capacitors. Make sure the capacitors aren't, how they're, see how they're looking. But I'm guessing if it was made in Japan, they're probably using good capacitors. So, I think it's actually in really good shape. Uh, what the hell Just, okay, it looks like someone was rubbing on top of the face plate here. I might be able to rub that up. Let's see, I'll clean it. I'll get some rubbing alcohol, maybe. You know, this might be too nice for me. Um, besides this thing being totally rare, and you never see these things. I've, I've, I've only seen like one video about this. Um, but all the road talkers you see on eBay are all the, either the smaller ones or the different base station without the LSB or USB. Um, I definitely haven't seen what's inside the box before, any pictures of that, so. Yeah, because even when I, I saw this picture, what he had on sale, I, I did some Googling, and I couldn't figure out, I couldn't see what's, what was in this thing. Um, so I wonder if they shared the same main board and just had different cases, or if it's like a completely different main board. Um, like I said, this thing is uh, AC driven too, so you, you can do either AC or DC. So I might, I'm gonna pat the tail down. I don't wanna scratch this thing up at all, it's too perfect. Actually, it might even be too perfect for me. <laughs> you know? It's like, I don't know if I want to... Because it's so, it's so mint, I don't want to keep it here on my test bench here. Just to, It's going to get clucked dust and stuff, you know? So, so here's a close look at it. Get your fuse. Four amps, you have your AC input. Then you also have your uh, 13.8 volts. So some of the other ones I saw, like the smaller ones, have some kind of weird six-pin connector, which is a combination of AC and DC. Um, but I wonder how you can get this thing off. I mean, I don't know if this is going to be a smart idea or a bad idea, but I really want to see what's inside of it. Just like that, bring that out of there. And I'll, try, I'll start off with the... I don't see what the leg is doing. See how long the screws are. All right, so once I got the screw off, it's... Looks like it just comes off. Wow. Okay, that's your power supply. Um, I'm not going to take it fully, completely apart, but it looks like there is... I mean, it looks like the other side, in front of this board right here, is just the controls, just the, the sliders, potentiometers, these, what are, I don't know what are these called, linear potentiometers? I'm not sure, the one that's sliding in the front, but... Um, yeah, I wanted to get this, like I said, there's no pictures of this board on the internet that, I can, that I'm aware of, so... Wow, this is super, super clean. Um, so I'm going to get my strong glass on. I'm going to be looking for any weird bulging caps or anything that looks like it's uh, any work done on the board, you know, mods or whatever. What's that? Um, I'm going to look at that. All right, so um, all the caps are actually Nichicon. So those are good caps. Uh, like I said, I went through, double-checked everything. I don't see any bulging or capacitors or it looks like anything that's leaking. Um, that is, actually is just a connector. I couldn't see, but... And then that is there. It's a light bulb. Okay, and they had it glued. So I'm guessing because it's glued right to that resist right there. I hope you can see that. I mean, it's too bright. Um, that's, I mean, it looks like, what is that, a light bulb? Can't tell. I mean, that seems like a light bulb. All right. All right. Double check. So I don't want to fire it up and uh, create more problems if I don't have to. All right. Here goes nothing, man. <laughs> Give it some power. Hopefully, this thing doesn't smoke. All right. Power button right there. Works, Ryan. Uh, 
I hear that sometimes you can you can clean these uh, VFO things and it'll fix that. Six. Yeah, it's been really active here in the last week. This evening. I actually do have it hooked up to an amp right here, but I'm not going to use hook. I don't want to have power the amp on. Yeah, the dial pipe needs to be cleaned. That's mainly what I'm interested in, this 38 lower sideband. PA. Alright. I mean, not much to the radio. I mean, it's, uh. I don't know. Like I said, it just makes me feel. It makes me feel guilty keeping this thing because I'm not, like, a CB radio enthusiast, you know? Um. I don't know. I'll decide if I'm going to keep it or sell it or what, you know? But, dude, look how good this thing is. Look how clean it is. It's crazy. Except for the the start the scuffing on the on the screen, I mean this thing looks like it's brand new. Yeah, all week long I've been picking on people from like the East Coast, you know, Georgia, Tennessee, uh, Florida, Alabama, like uh, North Carolina. So really good skip going on right now. So, hmm. All right, guys, let me know what you think down below. Should I keep it or sell it? All right, awesome.